back at Storage Day at Amazon in Boston. I'm Dave Vellante with the Cube. Ed Name is here. He's the general manager of SFSX. Ed, welcome to the Cube. Good to Thank see you. Thanks for having me, Dave. Okay, so explain to me why you guys launched FSX for Windows File Server. You know, why now? Well, we did it because customers asked us to do it. Um, what customers told us was that they were tired of all of the effort and overhead in managing Windows file systems and Windows file servers on their own. Everything from routine maintenance like patching to provisioning, they just didn't want to have to do all of that heavy lifting. So they asked us for a simple solution, fully managed solution on the cloud. There, there's a lot of Windows data out there, a lot of data that's accessed from Windows computers. Um, AWS is the cloud that has uh, the most Windows workloads running on it. So it was a very natural ask for customers to ask us, as they're moving their Windows workloads onto AWS, to have a file system that's fully managed for them that can be accessed by those workloads. So it was, it was actually very natural and, and uh, unexpected ask from customers. You know, a lot of people may not know that, but it, it does kind of make sense. There's so much Windows out there. You're the cloud leader, so, you know, peanut butter and jelly. Um, how do you see customers using FSX? For, for Windows. Yeah, what's really exciting is they're using it for a really broad spectrum of workloads. Uh, so everything from traditional user shares and home directories to uh, development environments to analytics workloads to video transcoding. So it's a very wide spectrum of workloads uh, that are that are on the service and uh, we're continuing to see new, new types of workloads every day, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. So we're here at Storage Day. What exactly is new around uh, FSX for, for Windows uh, File Server specifically? Yeah, well, we've launched a number of capabilities this year, um, throughout the year. Uh, so one of the, the significant ones that we launched was the ability for customers to use their self-managed active directories um, and uh, join their FSX file systems to those. So we now have two options. Customers can use a fully managed AWS fully managed Active Directory or their own with FSX. Um, we launched a number of uh, uh, capabilities around access from on-premises. For example, customers can now access, or when we launched it, we announced that they can now access their file systems over Direct Connect connections, over VPN, um, so they can access the Windows file systems from computers and from end users that are running on-premises. So um, quite a few announcements this year. Those are just two examples. And we're really excited about really a slew of, of announcements and feature features that we're launching uh, now. And I can get into those if you'd like. Yeah, give, give me some examples if you would. So, um, one of the, uh, the, the most common questions we've had from customers is, um, can we offer a native multi-AZ capability, multi-availability zone capability? So a lot of customers are running enterprise grade workloads on FSX and uh, they want to move uh, more and more of those workloads onto AWS, and they don't want to have to uh, d manage the overhead of using something like a distributed file system or DFS replication between FSX file systems and different AZs. So we're, in, we're launching a fully managed, super simple multi-AZ capability, and that's a deployment options that, cus that customers will have, um, in addition to what we already had, which was the single AZ deployment option. I see some recurring themes when you talk to uh, folks at Amazon they, and they announce services. Uh, it's, the, it's the same sort of mantra, be able to reduce that heavy lifting, shift your focus to things that will add more value to your business, take advantage of these other services through these integrations that, that we're doing. So, I mean, it kind of feels like a no-brainer, but I'll give you the, la the last word. I mean, is it, why is it, why should customers, you know, sell me on why I should move my uh, data into the cloud? Yeah. I mean, we, we like to think of it as a no-brainer because we are uh, fully managing everything for the customer. Um, the, uh, the, the service is built on top of Windows Server, so it provides a fully compatible Windows file system, and we manage that fully for customers. So you get complete compatibility with SMB, complete compatibility with NTFS file system semantics and features. Um, so it's a a uh, very simple move for customers to move their existing workloads onto the service and have it be fully managed. A couple of the other features that we're launching that I do want to, uh, to, to mention yes. are, um, we're launching data deduplication. Um, we're launching a, a whole bunch of administrative capabilities like user quotas. We're extending our administrative CLI to do things like allow customers to create uh, shares programmatically. So really a very exciting set of, of uh, capabilities that we really think make this a uh, a no-brainer for customers. 
Well, that's another recurring theme is you guys, you know, you, you drop prices and, you know, and look at the, the Moore's loss as prices continue to drop, but the difference is Amazon, you make it transparent. Uh, and if I use a service that's lower cost, my bill goes down. And then, of course, I end up using more because this is an elastic world, so that's a good thing. Um, but Ed, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and you. sharing us. And then the other thing is you guys are like Windows specialists, which is kind of ironic, you know, you're a leader in Windows and... Uh, well, it really comes from what our, what our customers are asking us for. So they see um, moving their Windows workloads as a first step to, to full modernization and, and being all in on the cloud. Great. Well, again, thanks, Ed. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right, and thank you for watching, everybody. Right back, right, to, right after this short break, Dave Vellante with theCUBE. Oh, <laughs>